on with our Hi everyone, Dr. Hall here, and so we're going to continue on with our second lecture on STIs, so part two, and we're going to talk about parasites and the bacterial infection. And in this first part, 24A, we're going to talk specifically about the parasites. So before we get into that, let's just take a moment to talk about all the different types of pathogens that there are. So pathogen, gen means creating, like genesis, path refers to pathology or illness. So these are things that create or cause illness. So uh, it's a fancy name for germs, right? So pathogens are germs, right? And so what are our options? So there are three main types of uh, pathogens or germs, microbes, that cause the sexually transmitted infections. And so those are parasites, bacteria, and viruses. You may remember when we talked about the non-sexually transmitted infections that yeast and fungal organisms could also cause infections. And that is true, they are pathogens, but they don't cause any of these STIs that we're going to be talking about. So when we think about these three different categories, I want to walk you through a few things. So we're going to talk about parasites first, and these are little tiny organisms that either invade or feed off of us. And sometimes they're only one cell big and they're microscopic and tiny. Sometimes they're big enough that we can actually see them with the naked eye without a microscope. So the ones that we're going to be talking about in this class are trichomonas, pubic lice, and scabies, which you know is not technically an STI, right? You can get that other ways too, but in college students it's often sexually transmitted, so we'll revisit that one. Bacteria are different because they are single-celled, so they're microscopic, they're tiny. It's only one cell and it doesn't have a true nucleus, so that's why a bacterium can be different from a single-celled parasite. There's no true nucleus. And so we're going to talk about three of those. We're going to talk about syphilis, chlamydia, and gonorrhea, which are the three major bacterial STIs. And then ultimately, we're going to talk about viruses. Viruses are very strange because they're technically not even living things. They can't reproduce on their own. They don't grow and develop. They don't really take in nutrients, like they don't eat. Um, so it's kind of, they're kind of strange. Uh, and so what a virus is, is it's just a strand of genetic material. So either DNA, which is the type of genetic material that our cells have on, in our chromosomes, or RNA surrounded by a protein shell. That's it, that's all they are. They're teeny tiny, and so you can only see them with the, the highest power microscopes, like things called electron microscopes. They are way, 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 way tinier than a single cell. So the uh, viral H or viral STIs that we're gonna talk about uh, later next week are herpes or HSV. HIV, which is human immunodeficiency virus, which is the virus that can cause AIDS, and then HPV, or human papillomavirus. So those are the things that we're going to be talking about in the next few lectures. So let's focus on parasitic infections first. So a few rules that apply to parasitic infections, and the big one, this is what makes them very different from the other sexually transmitted infections, is that these do not necessarily require direct transmission. They do not necessarily require intimate contact from person to person because they can live on fomites, which is the generic word that we use to refer to non-living objects. So they can live on your underwear, in your towels, your sheets, on a tanning bed, on a toilet seat. So you can pick up these infections from those other places. That is not the predominant way in which they are spread, but they can be acquired that way. Uh, so that's a big difference from the other STIs. The first one I want to tell you about is trichomonas. So trichomonas vaginalis is this single-celled parasite. We're looking at a microscopic image of two of them here, and they have these little uh, flagella, they have these little tails, and they actually kind of swim around 
And so trichomonas is sexually transmitted predominantly, although you can get it from swimsuits and toilet seats and those types of things. And in female bodied people, it can cause a vaginitis. It's often kind of a greenish foul smelling discharge and possibly some irritation. But in many female bodied people who get it, it's asymptomatic, meaning they don't notice that anything is different or wrong. It also can be latent for a period of years and then reactivate. Um, um, and become symptomatic after years of being asymptomatic. There are actually um, uh, cases of this being diagnosed in nursing homes and, and it's tricky because then they don't know, well, is this something that this woman maybe has had for 20 years and only just became symptomatic or has she been, you know, having some romantic rendezvous with Norman down the hall? You know, it can be hard to know sometimes. In male-bodied people, this is often asymptomatic but can cause a urethritis. The treatment for it is a special antibiotic that usually works quite well. So once it's diagnosed, it's easy to treat. The trick is that sometimes it's hard to diagnose because there may not be symptoms. All right, so here's that information again, right? A unicellular parasite, often asymptomatic, right? And can be latent for years. And just a reminder that trichomonas, like any other parasitic infection, can be transmitted via fomites. There's a YouTube link there so that you can see what these look like swimming around um, under the microscope. It's really pretty cool. The next one we're gonna talk about is pubic lice, which has the moniker crabs, because they almost look like little tiny crabs. It's kind of hard to see. So here's one here. So these are little tiny multicellular parasites that like to infect hair bearing regions, right? So these are lice just like any other lice. So they just happen to be in a different type of hair in a different part of your body than head lice, for example. But just like head lice, they attach to the shaft of the hair, they lay their eggs, and they can cause itching, right? So they're kind of crawling around down there, laying their eggs, and it can, be, can cause a local irritation and itching. So the treatment for these is to uh, use a topical cream, kills them pretty well, and like other parasites, you can sometimes catch these from fomites. So um, again, multicellular parasite, they're lice, just like head lice, just a different place. Um, you can get them from tanning beds and things like that. So if you use those, and there are a lot of other health concerns associated with tanning beds, but if you use them, make sure that you wipe them down thoroughly before you use them. And it typically causes itching, and we can treat it successfully with a topical prescription cream. No worries. Scabies, we've talked about this before when we talked about genital skin infections, and you'll recall it's not technically an STI, but is often transmitted that way in college students. So these little tiny mites burrow under the skin and they cause an itchy red rash, often these little tiny bumps, and it can be very itchy. So the treatment, again, is a prescription topical cream that you put on the skin and washing all of your clothes and linens in hot water to make sure that none of the mites are left living in any of your things. Let's see, did we get everything there? Yep, we did. So if you need to pause it and catch up, go right ahead. So in summary, there are three different types of sexually transmitted infections. There are bacterial, viral, and parasitic. And one thing that all the parasitic infections have in common is that they can be transmitted by fomites, things like underwear, sheets, tanning beds, toilet seats. Uh, this is one of the reasons why those little liners are in the bathing suits that you try on in the store, right? And so the three parasitic ones that we've talked about are trichomonas, which can cause a vaginitis or be asymptomatic, those little swimmers that can be found in the vagina. Pubic lice, which is just like head lice, but in a different place. And then again, scabies, not technically an STI, but in college students, it's usually acquired that way. So in part B, we'll pick up by introducing you to the bacterial STIs with one that has a lot of historical importance.